Hello students, today we will study second poem of grade 10 entitled Fire and Ice. The poem is written by Robert Frost. Robert Frost wrote the first poem also, Dust of Snow. The first poem is very small, the same way this poem is also very small in size. And in this video we will study about the poet. Introduction of the poem, rhyme scheme, explanation, poetry devices used, tone of the poem and theme and message. So we'll start with the life of the poet, author. Robert Frost was born on 26th March 1874 and died on 29th January 1963 at the age of 88. His full name was Robert Lee Frost and he was an American poet. His major works include The Road Not Taken, Supporting by, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, Mending Wall, Burches and Nothing Gold Can Stay. Generally, his poetry revolves around the subject matter of nature, pastoral life means the rural life and loneliness of the individual in the indifferent world. And if we talk about Robert Frost's philosophy about poetry, so he says that it's what is beyond that makes poetry. Beyond means unsaid over here. Not mentioned directly with the help of the words. Only hints are given. And this is the beauty in the writings of Robert Frost. He doesn't tell us each and everything word by word. Rather, he gives some hints and we have to interpret them and then understand. What is unsaid in any work of art? And he says that its unsaid part is the best part. Whatever it is left untold, unsaid, in any form of art, maybe poetry, it may be literature, it may be dance, it may be your painting, sculpture, any form of art. So that unsaid part, unprojected part, unmentioned part is the soul of that creation. That's why Robert Frost speaks a little but speaks in hints. Now we talk about the introduction of the poem. So the poem is a very popular and very famous poem and it was written and published in 1920 just after World War I and mentions probability of two differing apocalyptic scenarios. Apocalyptic bringing end to this world, scenario situations. According to Robert Frost, only two situations are there possible. Many are there, but strong possibilities are about the two situations which will bring this world to an end. And what are they? And those scenarios are represented by the elements of the poem's title. What are those elements? Fire and ice. Either this world will end because of fire or it will end because of ice. The speaker believes fire to be the more likely world ender, destroyer of the two and links it directly with what an individual has tasted of desire. So over here, when he says fire, doesn't mean that he's talking about fire itself. He has used fire and ice as symbols only. He uses metaphorical language. When he says fire, it means strong desire and lust of human beings. In an ironically conversational tone, the speaker adds that ice which represents hate and indifference. When he talks about ice, ice means hatred and indifferent attitude of the people. So he says that the world will come to an end either because of the lust and strong desire of the human beings or 
the hatred of human beings will put an end to this world. One day human beings will destroy the earth because of these emotions. Would also be great as a way of bringing about the end of this world. He says that ice and fire both have equal power to destroy the world. And ice means hatred and indifference and fire means strong desire and lust. There are two reported inspirations for the poem. The poem actually was inspired by two different things. What are two different things which forced the poet to write this poem? The first is the Dante's Inferno. Inferno is the name of a great novel written by Dante, who is the greatest, who has been the greatest philosopher of his time. And in that novel, Inferno, Dante make, makes a mention of hell, where the chief wrongdoers and criminals, they are thrown into a lake of ice. So he got an idea of ice as a destructive agent, which is very poetic and literary journey into hell and Inferno was written in 14th century. The other is reported conversation first had with an astronomer Harlow Shapley. Harlow Shapley was contemporary of Robert Frost and he was a very renowned and great astronomer. So one day in a party the meeting took place and they started discussing. Robert Frost out of curiosity only because it was the end of World War first only and the World War had caused a great loss of life and resources. And these things sensitize the philosophers and poets too much. So in conversation, Robert Frost asked Harlow Shapley how this world would end. Do you, what do you think about it? And then Harlow Shapley told him that either the, the sun will explode and due to the explosion of sun, the world will get incinerated, incinerated, destroyed to ashes or the earth will freeze into deep space. Because of these two reasons, the world will end. So this conversation was there between Robert Frost and Harlow Shapley and Harlow Shapley was surprised that the very next, just after one year, he read this poem of Robert Frost in a magazine. So these two incidents inspired Robert Frost to compose this poem. And in which in their conversation, they talked about the sun exploding or extinguishing fire or ice, both ways the world will end. Now we'll see the explanation part of the poem. It's a very small and short and sweet poem also, but very profound in meaning and philosophy. Only nine lines are there. So let's study line by line. Some say the world will end in fire. Robert Frost says that some say, some say means people over here, some say, simply people say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. He says that the people of this world, they do not believe in single agent of destruction. On this matter, the world is divided. The people are divided in two parties. One part of the people says that the world will be destroyed by the fire. Because World War First had taken place and in that a lot of arms and ammunition was used and it had caused a lot of destruction, a large scale destruction was there. So obviously people had witnessed and they said that obviously this fire, fire in the form of world war and all these things is going to end this world. Some say that this is ice, but by the way, this is the beauty of this composition. Otherwise, either you talk about strong desire or we talk about hatred because hatred itself is a strong emotion. 
and both are the two sides of the same coin the reason being if we are having strong desire we are having lust to gain something if we want to possess more and more so it means when we are possessing we are trying to dispossess others when we dispossess others so on our part this is strong desire but the people who get dispossessed they become full of hatred towards us so single incident gives birth to two things strong desire as well as hatred that's why i said that fire and ice in the context of this point are two coins of the two sides of the same coin so from what i have tasted of desire i hold with those who favor fire robert frost now gives his personal view over here says that what i have tasted he says that i have tasted desire because human beings are the bundle of desires they are the bundle of emotions also and he says that i have experienced tasted means over here i have experienced desire in my life and it makes me believe that if people have the desire more than requirement it can lead to destruction definitely i hold with those hold with those means i support i stand by those people i support those people and champion those people who favor fire who say that strong emotion of human being uh, strong desire of human being lust of human beings is going to put an end to this world he says that i my support goes to those people but if it is but if it had to perish twice perish die but in case of this world we'll say destroy and devastate come to an end but he said that suppose we have to kill or we want to die two times so first time fire is okay it will destroy the whole world if we have chance to revive and get another chance for death so obviously ice is also equally strong and can destroy the whole earth this is only the word play by robert frost a beautiful you know that uh, how he is weaving the theme out of these words actually he wants to convey one message hatred and strong desire both are equally capable to destroy this world i think i know enough of hate and he says see he says that i have my personal experience of desire over here he says that i have my personal experience of hatred also to say that for destruction ice is also great and on the basis of my personal experience i can say ice is also not less than fire when it comes to destroy the world and would suffice suffice means enough ice is enough for this world to destroy so simply speaking robert frost says that strong desire and lust and hatred and indifferent attitude of people can lead to the doom of this world so it's a very simple poem and very easy there is hardly a word which we do not know at this level and now we'll see the next part which is about the poetic devices so in poetic devices students first we'll see the rhyme scheme so let's move back to the previous slide and over here we'll see what rhyme scheme being followed over here so first line ends in the word fire i so let's label it as a next one is ice new sound new letter b will put b over here next one is desire so fire and desire they are rhyming to each other so over here we'll repeat the letter a next one is fire again a because it is getting repeated next one is twice so ice and twice they rhyme so whatever the letter we denote with this ice we have to just denote twice also with the same letter over a hate hate is the new sound so we'll denote it with the next alphabetical letter that is c next is ice and 
it is the repetition of the previous sounds so over here b then great hate and great they rhyme to each other so over here we'll use c and suffice in suffice again there is repeated sound so p so in this way our rhyme scheme is a b a a b c b c b this becomes the rhyme scheme next we'll see alliteration so example of alliteration let's see over here how many examples are there some say so in alliteration we know we'll be counting the initial consonantal sounds of the words in one line so some say say sound is repeated over here the world will end in fire so world where and where repetition of where sound and in fire some say again this we have already picked up from what i have tasted of desire i hold with those who favor fire no but if it had to perish twice again no repetition over here i think i know enough of hate again there is no irritation to say that for destruction eyes over here also is also great and would suffice so these are the example students where we find alliteration is used next poetic device is anaphora in anaphora consecutive lines begin with either the same word or the same phrase so let's see what is over here the first line begins with some say so this phrase is there and second line also begins with the same phrase so when same word or same phrase starts the consecutive lines the upcoming lines that is called anaphora so over here this is the beautiful example of anaphora moving to next is our antithesis in antithesis we see there are two poetic devices where we may feel a little bit confused one is oxymoron another is antithesis there is a little difference between the two otherwise we can get confused so what is the difference in oxymoron two opposite words are juxtaposed juxtaposed means they are put together in oxymoron two opposite words antonyms are put together like kind cruelty or cruel kindness or we can say the cold sweat or we can say the sound of silence so all these are just opposite words which create oxymoron but in antithesis two different ideas or two concepts are put together so what two concepts are put together the beginning two lines will show it the first line says some say the world will end in fire this is one concept one idea some say in ice this is second concept two concepts are put just together and in this way whenever you find two opposite or contrasting statements put together that creates antithesis so the first and the opening lines of the poem are the example of antithesis next is personification so in this case who is going to end this world fire and ice so fire and ice both are presented as and projected as warriors like great warriors can destroy by the way weapons are there over here poet doesn't use fire and ice and element only rather he projects them to be the great warriors who can cause an end to this world weapons are there elements are there but they need somebody to use them and over here fire and ice both are the elements to destroy the world and they are personified also next one is symbols or we can say metaphor also one example we can take about the metaphor or we can say symbol 
only two symbols are there one is fire and another is ice so fire is symbol of what so metaphorical meaning of fire is what strong passion this is strong passion fire means strong passion or lust you can say and ice means what ice means hate or that indifference so they are the symbol fire stands as a symbol for strong passion strong desire and i stands for hatred or indifference so over here the poet uses symbolism or we can say these are these two are the metaphors also next one is imagery in imagery also fire and ice both are the examples of imagery because we can visualize we can visualize fire and we can visualize ice also so whatever the things we can visualize they become the part of imagery next one is enjambment enjambment means the line of the poem is not self sufficient to express the clear cut meaning we need to read the next line so two lines put together make the sense clear then it becomes enjambment let's see some say the world will end in fire over here okay it is clear and the meaning is also clear if we put a full stop just after fire the meaning is clear but what about the second one some say in ice now it is meaningless unless you put this line just after the first one the sense won't come out properly the same way next one from what i have tasted of desire this phrase is not complete in itself unless we say i hold with those who favor fire and same way if you go through you'll find two lines put together become clear in meaning so whenever you find any poetry any poem where two lines or first line and half of the next line in this way they make the sense clear there is the example of enjambment and then comes irony what is irony the gap between the standard things and the talked things or the projected things how irony takes place in this poem we see the subject matter is very serious the subject matter of this poem is the end of this world so very serious very epic topic has been picked by robert frost but how he starts the poem how he begins some say the world will end in fire some say in ice so the style of the poem and its expression is very conversational very casual he is very casual in style to express a topic which is very serious because this is a matter of the end of this world not a particular thing itself so the discrepancy is where the gap is where the style of expression and theme both are just having a great contrast the style of expression doesn't suit to the theme of the poem that's why irony is used over here this is the example of irony moving to next is tone of the poem so tone is very casual and conversational as we know some say that the world will end in fire and some say it in uh, so, so some say this is the conversation this is how when we sit together in informal gatherings and we chit chat about the things the social things and the personal life we chit chat with the friends this type of the language has been used by the poet that's why the tone of the poem is very casual and it's conversational way as if he is discussing with people sitting in front of him next is theme of the poem so 
we talk about the major theme so hatred and power of emotions are the major theme of the poem the poet discusses the destructive features of human emotions and he uses the symbol of fire and ice to show how desires and hatred contribute to making the world stand at the verge of chaos so if we talk about the theme simply speaking we can say the theme of the poem is destructive nature of uncontrolled desire and emotion let me repeat you can take it down if we have to mention in single line the theme of the poem it is destructive power of uncontrolled and unchecked human desire and hatred or you can say emotion so this is the theme of the poem and next is our message so fire and ice this is extremely compact and little lyric we have already seen just nine lines are there and we can say robert frost did not waste even a single syllable syllable is the part of word every single word used by him is very much expressive he has put everything in nutshell the theme of the poem is the age old question the question is whether the world will end in fire or in ice and that age old question is the theme of this poem the title of this poem also the poet decides that any of the two options would achieve its purpose sufficiently well whether this is fire or this is ice both are capable to destroy us the poet shares the common belief that everything that exists will have its end too of course there can be difference in the life span but end is for sure anything that has come into existence will go back into the nothingness people are divided on this issue some think that the natural element of fire will cause the destruction of this world others believe ice will be the cause of the end and putting in terms of human emotions the element of fire stands for passion as i already told desire and love and unbridled passion unbridled unchecked and uncontrolled passion or desire can cause end to this world and the poet has experienced both these emotions he has given his personal experience to us he has shared by the way his personal experience about his strong desires in life and his hatred also and not only robert frost we also have these emotions and such type of the experience at some point of time obviously we feel very desirous and we feel overwhelmed with the emotions also so this is the common experience and universal experience we can see it doesn't matter how the world will end even hate born out of cold and icy reason is sufficient to cause destruction and the end of the world simply speaking in messes robert frost wants to say only one thing if we don't check our emotions and desires we will become our self destructors we are undermining ourselves so his indirect message to everybody is control your emotions control your desires lead a balanced life if you really want to see the earth a happy place to live on so that's all for now students i hope the concept is clear to you now if any doubt you just write down comment in the comment box i'll address and revert will come to you people with new video on the next topic till then take care bye bye